Tuki's honestly significant difference post-talk test is underpinned by the studentized range distribution. Today, we will go over how to calculate p-values without the need to reference a table using the cumulative distribution function. My name is Jacob, and I am a human factors consultant in Intrepid ProtoWorks. So we have the full studentized range distribution pictured at the bottom screen right now. We'll move it around as needed to keep it out of where I'm typing. The uh, We'll start off with a couple of imports. We will need to import math, and then we'll need to import scipy.integrate. We will go ahead and add in a couple of the prerequisite elements we need. If you look down at the function below, you'll see lowercase feet. That is the probability density function of the standard normal distribution. And uppercase v is the cumulative distribution function of the standard normal distribution. The probability density function we went over much earlier in this tutorial series. And I suggest you reference that if you want details in this. We're putting in a much more simplified version of how this is phrased here. We're also not going to go over the over plotting it or anything. The cumulative distribution function is simply the integral of the probability density function. So it's the area under the curve made by the probability density function, which is what we usually use when we are trying to get a p value for, say, like a z test. These two functions are required for the studentized range distribution. So let's go ahead and add in a comment here. We're going to go ahead and start on the studentized range distribution, cumulative distribution function. We're going to go ahead and make ourselves a little bit of space. Uh, note that in the formula, k is number of groups and v is the degrees of freedom. So we're going to start off by defining just the main function itself. And then from there, we're going to kind of work backwards. This main cumulative distribution function is going to take q, uh, q which is the output from the two keys HSD, the number of groups in our ANOVA, and the degrees of freedom uh, from the groups. Uh, we will go ahead and break this up into a polynomial 1 and a polynomial 2, and then our p will simply be polynomial 1 times polynomial 2, and we will return p. So let's continue to deconstruct this abomination. We'll start by doing a polynomial 1. So we'll do the number of groups times the degrees of freedom. And we'll take the degrees of freedom to the power of the degrees of freedom divided by two. And all of that will be divided by gamma, uh, the gamma function of the degrees of freedom divided by two times two to the power of our degrees of freedom min uh, divided by two minus one. Make sure to pay careful attention to the brackets here. So that does it for polynomial one. We'll do polynomial two. And we'll go ahead and start off by just getting this. We're going to get this from a function. We'll call this SRD underscore PDF underscore poly two. And it will take our Q, our number of groups, and our degrees of freedom. And then we'll go ahead and start writing that function up here. So we'll go ahead and define it just as we did previously. Fix a quick typo. So we'll do SRD CDF poly2, we'll take QDF and the number of groups. Then inside of this, we will also be defining a, another function because as, as you may have known from our previous tutorials, in order to take the integral of something, we need a function of what the integral is being taken of. And the integral is being taken with respect to X, so X from zero to infinity and then the other three arguments within it. The first part of this function, which will be the x to the power of our degrees of freedom minus 1 times e to the power of negative degrees of freedom minus 1, or negative degrees of freedom times x squared, and that will be uh, divided by 2. Our next step is to start tackling what's in the square brackets. So we'll define another function. So we'll have a function within a function, and this function will take, we'll call it sub poly 2, and it'll take an argument u, x, Q and our number of groups. So we'll start off by taking our standard normal distribution probability density function of U. So U in this case is what this integral is done in respect to. So it's U from negative infinity to positive infinity. 
and then we'll multiply. So we'll take our center mole distribution probability density function time of u times the cumulative density function of u minus the cumulative function of u minus q times x, and then that's taken to the power of number groups minus one. And then we will return sub poly. Now we'll take our func two and our error, and this will be sci pi dot integrate dot quad. It will take our uh, sub poly two function. And it will be done from negative infinity to positive infinity. And it will take the additional arguments of x, q, and the number of groups. So in this case, float or math. So float infinity, negative float infinity, or math dot infinity are the same. You can play around with either. Uh, they're the exact same. I'm just using math dot infinity in this case. And again, this will take the arguments of x, q, and the number of groups. We'll just say func equals func one times func two, and then we will return func, and then we will take the integral of f, and we'll so we'll define poly two and error is equal to sci pi dot integrate. So same as build, uh, before, except this time uh, the function will be integrated with regards to f, and it'll be from zero to infinity. And it'll take the additional arguments of Q, DF, and the number of groups. And then we'll just return poly2. Once we're done with that, we'll go ahead and uh, fix a typo real quick down below. And that should about do it for our function to give us the second polynomial. This will this should give us everything we need to make um, make use. So let's go ahead and look at our table now. Uh, this is a little bit small, but you can look up an EQ table. They should all basically be the same. I'm going to go ahead and look up the Q value 2.4 for 0.1 and 30 degrees of freedom. So go ahead and type that in here. Q equals 2.4. Degrees of freedom equals 30. And number of groups equals 2. So now if we go ahead and just print out our standardized range distribution cumulative uh, density function, we'll, uh, that should give us 0.1. So we go ahead and do 1 minus that and I'll Goes the result, otherwise, it'll show 0.9 and it'll get the three decimal places. Configure and run. And we have an error. So go ahead and left click here. So I considered editing all of this out, but I think it's going to be productive to see the process of trying to figure out errors. So, first thing I did was left click the uh, the bottom most error and see what happens and then I make some changes. I go back, reference my notes, make make a change, see if it does anything, see if the errors change. So now I'm looking through a few more of the errors and then I go back up top, going back to my notes. In your case, you can look at the GitHub and look at this tutorial and paste in, see if you've made an error. Check the check the parentheses. That's a really common source of error. And it looks like so that was part of the problem. So I messed up the parentheses there. So I fixed that, hit run, and now we have another error. So type error unsupported operand. So we've got float and none type. So that means that one of either poly one or poly two, probably poly two is giving us that. We're going to go ahead and print off each. So poly two is giving us a none. So now I need to go back and see why it's telling us or returning none. So we can go ahead and get rid of the two print statements real quick and then go start looking up at uh, at our poly2 function. So we're adding in some print statements and see why it's returning none. Okay, so that uh, func is returning a value, though that's not the issue. Looking at it, I appear to have actually just forgotten to include the return statement for poly2. And we get a value. The value makes absolutely no sense. So now I have to go through and figure out why that is not returning what we expect. So we start by adding in print statements again and see if the numbers we're getting are in the right ballpark. So you should expect a really small number for uh, poly 2 and that's what we end up with. So that's right-ish. I don't know if that's exactly what I should be getting. So now I'm going to go back to my original notes and code for this and uh, compare. So I'm seeing one error. One being that I put the wrong arguments in. I should have put in x, q and them groups, not QDF num groups. Next, I go back up and I'll take a look at the PDF and CDF for the standard normal distribution. 
as we are still not getting the value that we should be getting. So I'll go back and again reference my notes, take a look to see what's different. Uh, all I'm seeing is just spaces. I'll try running the code again with the code from my notes. No, nothing's different there. And again, I'll try running the code and see if anything's different. So nothing's wrong with those. So I undo those changes and then go back down. So that just leaves one spot left, and that's going to be poly one. So I'll go again back through and reference uh, the groups, and I'll take a look. And it looks like I've messed up the parentheses. So we'll save and run that, and it looks like we're finally getting the correct result. So I'll go ahead and manually add that real quick so you can see. So I'll go ahead and add in a parentheses there, and go ahead and save and run. And there we go. That is the correct result. Let's go ahead and tab over to our table and pick another value. So we'll go ahead and pick out, say, 30 degrees of freedom and do everything except we want 0.05. Okay, so we get 0.05. Let's go ahead and look at 0.01. So we need 3.889, 0 0.01. There we go. Uh, that looks like we have everything correct. So this, again, is the studentized range distribution that is used in Tukey's HSD. In our next video, we will go through and go over the actual test itself. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, please ask them down below.